Hey, this is Matt once again. We're about to another video, and this is a paid request for Andrew. Thank you so much for that. For those interested in requesting any type of videos, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. I also do have a Cash App. It could be any type of review, topic, reaction, uh, commentary, re review, random stream, uh, yeah, even random streams, uh, tier lists, rankings, topics, rankings, whatever the case may be. Feel free to send it, and I'll get to as soon as I can. And the links are down below in the info box. Now, Andrew requested episode two of the Confession Killer. So, yes, I did review episode one. And this is about the serial killer Henry Lee Lucas, but more so about the aftermath, which has been so fascinating so far, about how... That just this injustice of the the system of the law, where Henry Lee Lucas was caught, put in jail. Well, he was caught, and then he says, "Oh, by the way, I killed all these other people too, like 150 people," and became this media circus, where even Japanese journalists came by, and in the last episode ended with, "Oh yeah, I drove to Japan." You, how did you get to Japan? Oh, I drove there. Yeah, I killed people in Japan. Yeah, how did you get to Japan? I drove there. <laughs> drove to Japan. So, I, And this one journalist, understand me so, uh, Hugh Ainsworth, he's going, this guy's full of it. Like, what, what's this guy, you know, what's going on here? And he talked about how at the Georgetown jail, how all these people, how Henry Lee Lucas would look to him and like he looked at him as a friend, not as a sheriff. And how every day Henry Lee Lucas would get a strawberry milkshake. And like a deal of, well, if you help us with a case, you'll get a strawberry milkshake. And go, well, I, I got three. So that means, uh, or it's, was it, at one point he like six murder cases a day at times cleared. So he'd be like, well, I got six uh, strawberry milkshakes. Do you want them all at once? Well, once a day. I'll do it once a day. So you got a strawberry milkshake every day. And people, they were all nice to him. It's just insane about what's going on here, yet it's true. And about how his, oh, I did this, I did this. It really starts to not add up. He did kill people, but not this many people. Uh, at the beginning, we're very sad to, to see this uh, this victim, this woman named Debbie, and we see her family. Her family talks about Debbie and the death of her. And then later on in the episode, we see more of them where we got called and this guy said he did it. But then we looked at his... At what he said at his confession and we go we don't believe this he didn't do this because he said he went through the sliding door but that could not be the case because there was a cabinet there like, there's a cabinet right in front of the sliding door so there's no way he could go in there and he went through the back door well no because it's over here and like, his story didn't check out his story did not check out at all to the point that they did their own investigation. Even to the point again on 60 Minutes. I didn't know this. They were on 60 Minutes. And you see the footage of 60 Minutes. Where these parents go. We didn't believe this. And what makes that serious is. And they go. Well Henry did it. And the case is closed. That means the real killer is out there. That means the real killer got away with it. That means the real killer went. Well, wait. And then maybe in the psyche of that person to go, well, I guess I could do it again. Because if I do it again, someone else will take the blame. Or if something happens, they won't look at this case because it's cleared. Henry Lee Lucas did. So it can't be, well, what's the pattern? Or is there any other cases open? No, they won't look at this because Henry Lee Lucas said he did it. So I'm in the clear for that. It's such a horrible, dangerous Precedent, precedent that 
I could see why the parents would be pissed off. And I want to give a bit fuck to you this guy, Bob Prince, who's like a former Texas Ranger sheriff. You don't deserve that. Walter Texas Ranger would beat the shit out of you, dude. You fat ass. You fat fuck. You asshole, Bob. Baby Bob should take your spinter in prison. You'd belong there. Prince. Ain't no damn prince. You're not a king, you're not a prince, you're not a squire. You're just a ball sweater, as in my balls will sweat in your face. Because he's the guy who's like, well, they just want someone to blame. And someone's going, well, did you look into it? No, not my business. You know? No, not my business. I'm like, you pe they're giving you sincere information. It's like, huh, not my business. They want to find someone to blame, and they blame the wrong people. They took down the wrong people. I'm like, no, but you are the right people. Because in this, I mean, Harry Lou Lutz is bad, but you, I almost say, you're worse, because you're supposed to be representing the law. You're supposed to be representing helping people, save people's lives, help people in their grief, and you're trapping on them, so you get another soft case, another little sticker next to your name, and you're Eedy beedy teedy folder. They probably put between your tits. Bob Prince. He could kiss my fucking sweaty ass. Just like there was another person that died. Which they nicknamed Orange, Orange Sock. Because she had orange socks on. And the journalist looked in this and go. There's no way he could have done this. Because he was at work over here. But yet the killing was over here. Even over here, Henry go, oh yeah, I didn't do it. But he wanted to die, so he wanted to say yes to this to get the death penalty. Which he succeeded. And apparently that was, I'm sure we'll find it elongated because he kept giving these confessions and helping the police out. Like the journalist does his diagram of if he really did all the stuff he confessed to in the span of like a month or so, he would have been from here to here to here across the country going 11,000 miles within like a month or so. He went all across the country here. They would have been all the way across the country here. They would have been all the way over here. Then it would have been all the way over here. Then like with, And the, the time, it's like, no, that can't be the case. There's no way that's the case. And the sheriff's like, I know he did it because he told me. <sighs> these these Texas Ranger the, the Texas Ranger tops are slime bags. They are horrible, horrible people. They literally just went and took this guy at his word, just to be heroes. To look like they're the guys that don't solve the most murder cases in history. They cost suspect zero. Oh my god. Yeah, apparently October 1978, in one month he traveled 11,000 miles. My favorite part of this, of this episode was the finale of the episode. Where we talked with this DA called Vic Fiesel. Sure, what I'm doing on time. Okay, I'm good. Sorry. Yeah, Vic Fiesel. Vic Fiesel. He was a district attorney. Or at least about to be one. Was one or about to be one? I forget which one. But he's like, oh well. Apparently, you know, he's solving all these murder cases. But he's one of the few that actually questioned. Wait a minute. Something doesn't add up here. And him and this cop got into this computer, the NCIC, to try to pull up records. And they pulled up a little bit. They go, wait a minute, there's something not tracking here. There's something, something doesn't add up. Something does not add up. <clears throat> so they tried to look up more records. And the way they edited this together, uh, really, I thought did a, it was a great bit. What I mean by that is, 
it really did give me a bit of the goosebumps and an uneasy feeling where Vic would say, you know, I was talking, I forget the cop's name, and when he, when he told me and then showed me, my heart just sunk. You're like, what? I'm thinking, what? Access denied. So apparently they were getting so close to the truth and looked and asking the right questions that a DA and a cop had access denied to learn more about Henry Lee Lucas on the little computer that they had or little machine that they had in this early era of technology. Access denied. I mean, if that's not a cover-up, I don't know what is. That's a cover-up. That is entirely a cover-up. And it's like they know there could be doubts. But here's the thing. Now it's going to be, well, if there's even one doubt, then all the other pe cases, you got to throw doubts on all of them. You can't believe any of them now. And would completely destroy those cops' careers. I would not be surprised if what happened was these cops at first thought, yeah, Henry Lee Lutis, yeah, this guy's a massive serial killer, he's crazy. And I think they believed him at first, and this media circus started. But I wouldn't be surprised at one point they went, oh, wait a minute, this guy is doing this for attention, and he may be lying about some of this. But if we tell the truth, then we'll be looked at as the biggest fools, complete aid on our face, complete from media darlings to complete utter dumpster fire of animosity that they would be heaped upon those individuals on a consistent manner and they rather sold their souls than get found out and get in trouble. Very fascinating, I will say, it's a very fascinating bit of business. Went at a good pace, it was less than an hour long, and, uh, man. It makes you think, man. Definitely makes you think, but very well done episode. A lot of interesting information. Wood Edric Pace with either on camera interviews as well as footage from back in the day. And <clears throat> they add in a computer that says access denied to really sell what Vic Vizo was describing. And <sighs> just makes you so mad and angry about these people that just screwed over so many families that their killers were escaped escaped and that's such a detriment to justice man it really truly is but with that said thanks for watching take care thanks once to once again to Andrew for the request and we'll see you guys later Bye-bye.